Hey there, welcome back to another week of Energy Express. I'm your host, Zach Harold, and today I'm down by the Canal River in sight of the South Side Bridge in Charleston. Fun fact about this bridge, you no doubt heard of Chuck Yeager, a World War II flying ace, first guy to break the sound barrier, native West Virginian. Well, one time he was back here visiting and he apparently flew a jet underneath that bridge. But you're just gonna have to take our word for it because there's no video or photo evidence of it. We've got another great week of high-flying content for you here on Energy Express. And we're gonna begin today with a read aloud of the book, Wish. Hello, viewers at home. My name is Adeola Ogunwade. I am an Evaluation and Communication Specialist with West Virginia University Extension. Today, we are going to be reading a book titled, Wish. This book is written and illustrated by Chris Sanders. Follow me as I read along. Once every year, wishes take flight, filled with hope and twinkling light. They dance in the air with a swirl and a swish. You have to be lucky to be chosen by a wish. Here's a bunny looking at all what he could wish for, looking at the air, looking at the clouds. The next page. Rabbit was amazed as wishes danced and rose. Then all of a sudden, one landed on his nose. Two more wishes fell at his feet. Now he had three. Oh, what a treat. Rabbit had never caught a wish before. He could not decide what to wish for. So off Rabbit went with a hop and a swish to ask his friends what to do with a wish. Here is the rabbit hopping all along, going to ask his friends what to do with a wish. Rabbit asked Mouse, what would you wish for? His friend climbed up from the woodland floor. The world is big and I feel so small. I wish I could fly and see it all. Hmm. Next, the rabbit looked to the sky. What would they see? And he thought to himself, is this wish for me? Here is the picture of the rabbit up in the sky. Thinking, is this wish for me? So off Rabbit went with a hop and a swish to ask his friends what to do with a wish. Next, Rabbit asked Fox, what would you wish for? Wondering what his friend had in store. I wish I could write stories everyone would admire, books of knowledge and hope and power to inspire. Here's the rabbit asking his friend Fox. So rabbit imagined Fox's stories, how exciting they would be. And he thought to himself, is this wish for me? Here is the rabbit thinking through all Fox's stories and wondering whether the wish is for him. So, off Rabbit went with a hop and a swish to ask his friends what to do with a wish. Let's see where the rabbit goes next. Rabbit asked a bear, what would you wish for? As Bear watched the waves roll up the seashore. I have traveled over the mountains 
and climbed every rock and tree. But I wish I had a boat to explore the open sea. Here is the pier, watching the waves on the seashore. Rabbit wondered about the rowing and how strong Bier must be. And he thought to himself, is this wish for me? Here is the bear rowing on the sea. And now, still never having made a wish before, he finally asked himself, what should I wish for? I wish for the small to feel uplifted and tall. I wish for inspiration to wash over us all. I wish for a world filled with spirit and adventure that we can enjoy and live in together. These are all rabbit's wishes. So, Rabbit granted his friend's wishes. One, two, and three. Then he suddenly realized, hmm, there are none left for me. And the fox said, thank you, Rabbit, for being so kind. We have something to say, if you don't mind. This is the fox and the bear. By noticing me, you helped me feel tall, treating me as your equal, even though I am small. So, if you find yourself lost, forgotten, or alone, just look to the sky and I will guide you home. Another friend of Rabbit said, Thanks to you, I am busy writing, great, creating amazing stories, so wonderfully exciting. I have been inspired by your selfless deed. Please choose a story you wish me to read. I finally have a boat with which I can explore over the horizon beyond the sandy shore. But before I go, there is something you should see if you have a moment. Please come with me. Beer asked Rabbit to close his eyes as he had a special surprise. Here is the beer asking the rabbit to close its eyes. It is never too late to go on an adventure. Thanks to you, little rabbit, we can all go together. And this is the end of the story. I don't know about you. I'm also thinking I can make a wish. What is your wish today? Thank you for listening. Next up, we're going to talk to Misha Porter. She's West Virginia University's Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion about belonging. Hello, friends. Misha Poor here, Vice President for the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at West Virginia University. Let's talk. Today, let's talk about belonging. Do you know the song, Take Me Home Country Roads by John Denver? Here at West Virginia University, we sing it after every win and at each commencement. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. That word belong is an important one. What does it mean to belong? And how does it feel when we do? We can experience a sense of belonging around people we have something in common with, like our family, our friends, or people from our community. 
Here at WVU, when we are all decked out in our colors, our gold and our blue, we feel connected like we belong. When we feel supported, secure, and able to be ourselves, we feel like we belong. There's a sense of peace to belonging. It's important for you to know that this feeling of belonging does not depend on everyone around us being the same or even agreeing to think alike. Belonging is based upon each of us respecting those around us and allowing everyone space to be themselves. When we treat each other with respect, appreciate people for who they are, and remember that each of us are growing into a better version of ourselves every day, we help create a healthy community where everyone can know that they belong. Like they say, when you know better, you do better, and we all can do better. See you next time. Now we're gonna to head to West Virginia University's Jackson's Mill, where we'll meet Nyla Cobb. And she's gonna to talk to us about making friends, how to deal with bullies, and we're gonna do an activity to learn what we want from a friend. Good afternoon here from beautiful, historic Jackson's Mill 4-H camp. I'm Nyla Cobb and I am a healthy lifestyle specialist for WVU Extension. And I'm here to talk to you today about making friends and being a friend, okay? So the first thing that I want you to think about is, first of all, what are the most important characteristics of a friend, okay? Characteristic is all the ways you would describe your friend, okay? You might describe your friend as funny, or you might say, I want a friend that um, is really caring. I want somebody who really will listen to me when I have a problem. I want somebody that I can just play video games with and they understand the same things that I like to do. Um, sometimes we like friends that are very different from us. And um, I will tell you a little story about when I, um, met my first bet my first and best friend and her name was Linda and we were in the second grade and um, I noticed that Linda was very bashful and shy and she was having a really rough time in the second grade I saw her outside on the playground and I noticed that she was not with anybody and she was kind of standing off to herself and I thought I went up and I introduced myself and I said do you want to be friends and she said yes and so um, Linda and I are still friends all of these years later I was in her wedding she was in my wedding we bike ride together still we still are very best friends to this day so I, my wish for you is that you can find a friend like Linda. And Linda and I are very different uh, people and uh, we still like very different things, but we, that makes our friendship much richer. So I wanted to show you for a moment this little activity that you can do. And this is called a friendship chain. And all it takes are some little strips of paper like this, and then a, a marker, of course, and then a stapler. And what you do is you think about if you were going to write a want ad in the newspaper, okay, of what kind of friend you want, then you would write that down. For instance, if I wanted to say, I want a friend who, doesn't talk as much as me because I talk a lot, okay? So I want a friend that might just be a quiet person. Then I would write that word on the strip and then I would take it and I would add it to my chain of all the other things that I have talked about that I want to have a friend. And then you take a stapler or a piece of tape and you just staple that like this and here I have my want ad for who I want as a friend. I want them to be funny. I want them to be honest. That's very important to me to have an honest friend. I want them to be loyal. I want them to be helpful. 
I want them to be caring. I want them to be kind. And I like a friend that's quiet and a really good listener. So I encourage all of you to make a friendship chain so you can be reminded of the person that you're looking for, okay? But the very interesting part of that is you also have to think about what kind of friend you want to be, okay? That kind of brings me to a different conversation and that's about what happens when people aren't being kind and they aren't being your friend. This is, this is important that we talk about when people aren't kind and that's when they do something called bullying and you all have probably heard of bullying. And so I wanted to talk with you about um, what does happen whenever you're being bullied, okay? If you are being bullied, I am so sorry, and I'm really sad to hear that because it's not okay. But there's some things you can do uh, to react to bullying in a positive way. And first of all, sometimes when people, you know, they just start out and they might say something unkind or mean to you, sometimes if you just put your hand up and say, stop, that's not okay. Um, people will get the clue, but sometimes people, for whatever reason, they might just be having a really rough life or whatever, and so they have a lot of meanness in their life and they want to take that out on you, okay? So if you can just stay away from that person, you know, just don't go around them when they're mean. That's the first best way to get away from a bully because the other clue here, people do not bully when adults are around. So keep yourself around adults when you're around that person. The other thing you can do if that doesn't work and it's just absolutely continuing and it's really bad, you need to tell a trusted adult, okay? Have that hard conversation with a trusted adult. Now, who are your trusted adults? Well, it could be your parents. It could be a teacher, a coach, your 4-H leader. It could be um, a lot of different people in your life but find that trusted adult and then share with them what's happening to you. If you wanna know more information about bullying, there's a great website called stopbullying.gov and it's a very important place for you to go if you or your parents feel like you need some more information. So finally, I'm gonna to talk to you again about what you can do and that's treat other people with respect. We wanna treat everybody with respect we want to be able to also stand up for your friends, okay? So just watch your own behavior and make sure you're not making fun of somebody. You know, it can happen so easy. You could see somebody with some funny shoes on and you could think, those look like clown shoes. And before you know it, something's come out of your mouth and you're like, are those clown shoes? And you said that and you did not mean to hurt anybody's feelings. You know what's important? Apologize. You need to apologize as soon as you can and say, I'm sorry I said that about your shoes. They're just, you know, they're really cool, but they just look different. And so I said that and now I really want to take that back and I'm sorry I hurt if I hurt your feelings. It will make a difference. It makes a huge difference in someone's life. So I'm going to wrap this up by saying I want you to think about this summer or where you're making friends. There's so many places you just never know where that opportunity is gonna spring up to make that new best friend. But you gotta have your want ad. You gotta know what you want and what you're looking for in a friend and also how to be a friend. So that's all for today. We look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much. You know, the other day my kid came up to me and she said, Dad, what's the best thing about Switzerland? And I said, you know, it's hard to say, but the flag is a big plus. My name is J.R. Davis, and I'm the 4-H Youth Development Extension Agent for Fayette County. And we're here at the brand new steam building at Jackson's Mill. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the West Virginia 4-H Pen Pal Program. In the last half of 2020, a group of extension agents and staff members got together to develop a program to develop meaningful connections between 4-H members from all across our state. The first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to be talking about how to address an envelope. 
In the upper right hand corner, that's where you would write your address, your physical address for where you're going to be mailing your letter. In the center here, that's where you're going to be sending your letter to. That would be your pen pal's name and their address. And in the top left hand corner, that would be your postage stamp. You would put that in the mailbox, turn up the red flag and send it on to your pen pal. We're gonna be talking about our recommended parts of our letters now. First, you're gonna be starting with your heading. This is gonna be your name, your address, and your date that will go in the upper right-hand corner of your letter. We'll start with our greeting. That's where you'll say, hello, dear pen pal, or how are you doing today? And we'll get into our body of the letter. The body of the letter is where you're going to be talking about details, where you're going to be talking about yourself and with your pen pal about what's going on in your daily life, maybe how's 4-H going for them, or what they're doing during this time off. During your first letter to your pen pal, just say a few basic things about you. My favorite color is green. I love 4-H. But remember, we want to be safe. So don't share too personal of details. Just say what we need to, to get our point across. And then you always want to close with an ending. That would be sincerely regarding or have a great day and end with your name. Now the West Virginia 4-H Pen Pal program currently has 112 youth from all across the state that have been writing letters to 4-H members of their same age. The fun fact is we even had a full classroom down in Wayne County that's actually participating in this program. So they've been sending letters out on a regular basis to their assigned pen pal. Pen pals have been assigned by the same age and we made sure not to include somebody from your county. So everybody should be out there receiving their letters by now. And we're looking forward to seeing how you can be of service to your 4-H program through further programs like this. We also want to talk about accountability. Now we want to make sure that everybody is conversing back and forth with their pen pal. So staying accountable means taking actions, taking actions for your own actions. So we want to be sure that everybody's enjoying the program. So try to send out your letters on a timely manner. Now, remember to be patient because sometimes the mail service takes a little bit longer than usual, especially if weather is bad. But take patience and send out your letters so that we can start communicating. Now, the last thing that I'm going to be talking about today is how to use the Pen Pal program as part of your 4-H project. When thinking about how to relay this back to a project book, the group of agents that developed it decided this project, while not a requirement, would work best with the 4-H self-determined curriculum. The self-determined project book allows you to develop your own topic. Now, sometimes in this project book, it's going to ask you for a visual exhibit or presentation at the end. That's just the last requirement to complete it. So something that you might be able to take from this pen pal program to your self-determined book, maybe create a collage of stamps. Maybe collect pictures that you and your pen pal have shared back and forth. Maybe create a journal with things that you have learned about your pen pal. Not everybody in this program is a 4-H member. I mentioned before that we had the entire Wayne County classroom participating. Now, if you would want to join 4-H, we serve youth nine to 21 years old, and you can contact your local extension office to see how you can get involved. Get those submitted to your county office and we'll see what we can do at the state fair if it qualifies. And that, guys, is the West Virginia 4-H Pen Pal Program. Happy writing!
thank you so much for joining us today for Energy Express. We'll be right back here tomorrow. We hope you join us.